We've tracked the board games with the biggest gains in popularity, traffic, discussion, sales, and news this month, and have compiled the top 10 in this list of games with Momentum. Hey there! I'm Chaz Marler, and our countdown calendar of cardboard climbers kicks off with the release of a brand new version of one of the games that brought me back into the hobby way back when, the second edition of 2009's Summoner Wars from Plat Hat Games. Summoner Wars is a tactical dueling card game that puts players in the role of powerful conjurers, each in control of a unique army, summoning units from their decks, outmaneuvering their opponent, and cutting down the opposition to claim victory. Be wary though, because your opponent is going to take every advantage possible to destroy you and your army because they do not realize it is your birthday. The second edition of Summoner Wars features updated versions of the various factions, along with several new ones, new artwork all over the place, a revised rules system putting some polish on the game's mechanisms, and can be played in person with physical cards or online with a browser-based app. And speaking of card games with striking artwork, this episode is sponsored in part by Knight of the Ninja from Brotherwise Games. Knight of the Ninja is a fast-paced game of deadly secrets, midnight assassinations, and paper-thin alliances. In the game, your mission is to defeat a rival ninja house, if you can figure out who they are. Each round, players choose their ninja role. A spy or a mystic can gain valuable information, but only an assassin or shinobi can cut down an opponent. To win, you'll have to figure out who can and can't be trusted, trick your opponents, and fight for your house. It's lightning fast, requires no moderator, and supports up to 11 players. Plus, every card features paper craft art in a shadow box style by Ben Charman, intricately hand cut and photographed to create a unique, evocative visual style. Night of the Ninja early access pre orders are coming soon, with the game scheduled for shipping to US retailers this September. So, follow the link in this video's description to receive a pre order alert directly from BrotherWiseGames.com when the game becomes available. Up next is another new version of an old classic, the upcoming Catan 3D Edition. In this tactile translation of the tabletop top dog, the buildings, roads, lands, and more are presented on three-dimensional tiles based on tiles hand-sculpted by the game's designer, Klaus Tuber. Now, all of the terrain is hand-painted, and the intricately designed player pieces are ink-washed to give them an antiquated look. Not to be that guy, but Technically speaking, isn't every edition of Catan 3D? I mean, all board games, by the very nature of being physical products composed of mass that has volume and space, is three-dimensional, right? I mean, in this sense, I've already been playing Catan 3D for years. And yes, you're right. Now, hearing the words come out of my mouth, I do understand why nobody invites me to game night anymore. So. Okay, Catan 3D includes 19 hand-painted terrain textiles, 6 hand-painted sea frames, 9 hand-painted harbor markers, 8 translucent number tokens, 4 sets of player pieces in 4 colors, an antiquated robber figure, 124, not 123, 124 cards, custom dice, and more. That's a lot of stuff they used for this game. However, even still, they did not use my slogan that I suggested. Catan 3D adds depth to your gameplay experience. Depth. Because it's in three dimensions. Yeah, no. Hearing the words come out of my mouth now, I, I understand why nobody invites me to marketing meetings anymore either. Congratulations! Your big moment has finally arrived, and today is the day that you have officially earned your degree as a certified Dragon Trainer, and now you have been invited to a mysterious, foreboding island to complete your training, perfect your craft, and perhaps be hunted for sport. But you are not the only trainer traveling to this particular peninsula, so prepare for a challenge. Because in Dragon Domino, a family version of a tile placement game in the world of King Domino, designed for younger audiences, players go in search of dragon eggs as they build their domino dioramas. Dragon Domino was the 2021 Kinderspiel des Jahres winner, which builds on the tile building concept of its predecessors, King Domino and Queen Domino. Players not only link land links together, but also compete to see who among them will discover the most baby dragons. 
Now, while the English edition of Dragomino was released in 2020, the German edition didn't become available until 2021, where it then went on to receive one of the country's and industry's most prestigious awards. The next game mustering momentum this month is Deliverance, the freshman project from Loen Games. Now, I think that I remember seeing a prototype of this game back at BGG Spring back in 2019, and it was pretty intriguing. Now, if this was indeed an earlier version of this game, well, then it's really neat to see how its development has progressed over the last couple of years. Now, in Deliverance, players portray spiritual warriors armed with weapons, courage, and angelic powers as they and their faithful allies must overcome legions of demons and slay the enemy's loathsome leader. The game is designed to provide highly intelligent opponents controlled by the game's AI, an asymmetric, action-driven tactical combat system with random elements, multiple difficulty levels, both a skirmish survival mode and story-driven campaign, plus a solo experience as well. Ha! But is it 3D? Well, actually it is, incorporating over a half dozen miniatures into the mix. Deliverance is currently running on Kickstarter through Thursday, July 8th, and is scheduled to deliver to its backers in summer of 2022. And if you find the board game countdowns that we deliver to be fun and informative, well, then a subscription to the channel would be divine. And another ambitious ascender I'm aware of is Adele, a claustrophobic one versus many board game for up to five players that takes place during a mission to Mars when the onboard computer becomes self-aware and identifies the crew as potential threats. That's never good. So now the player's original mission has been changed to simply surviving the ambivalent electronic AI originally designed to sustain them on their journey. In the game, all but one player takes on the role of crew members, with the remaining player controlling the spaceship's powerful and vigilant cyber sentinel, Adele. The Adele player must surmise what actions the crew are plotting and protect them from themselves by hindering their plans. This can be done by creating fires, closing floodgates, shutting down computers, or depleting the ship's oxygen. You know, helping. Will the crew be able to devise a survival plan and carry it out before they perish? I don't know. I haven't played the game yet. <laughs> what I do know is that Adele ran a Kickstarter campaign which ended on June 13th, and the game currently has an estimated delivery date of this October. Now, the publisher has a production plan in place to achieve this deadline, which is only four months away. So. We'll see if the designer's own computers cooperate with them enough for them to stay on their fulfillment schedule. Let us temporarily turn our attention away from Kickstarter to a game that first hit store shelves in 2019 and recently saw a resurgence of attention this month, The Lord of the Rings Journeys in Middle-Earth, a fully cooperative, app-supported board game for 1-5 to five players from Fantasy Flight Games. Now, each individual game of Journeys of Middle-Earth is a chapter in a larger campaign in which players explore the landscapes of Middle-Earth and use their unique skills to survive the challenges that they encounter. The game's companion app guides players by revealing plot points and surprises within the forests, quiet clearings, and ancient halls of Middle-Earth, while also controlling the enemies that they encounter. Players can also venture into the wild on either a solo excursion or as part of a larger adventuring party. And speaking of games for parties, well, this episode's other sponsor is the party game Fiesta de los Muertos from Asmodee Canada. And while Fiesta de los Muertos may not feature goblins and orcs, it is brimming with skillful skeletons. And for more about the game, here's a professional voiceover actor. The dead have risen in Fiesta de los Muertos. Here we ask that you write down a single hint describing someone famous and deceased. But be careful, this hint will go around the table and somewhat warp. In the end, you'll have to associate the hints with the figures. Fiesta de los Muertos is a cooperative game of ambiance with great material. Follow the link in this video's description to find Fiesta de los Muertos at toy, game, and hobby retailers across the country.
The next game on the charts this month is Now or Never from Red Raven Games, which up to four players compete to best rebuild their ancestral village while creatures spawn from a mysterious meteorite hinder their plans. Now or Never is the third game in Ryan Lockett's Arzium storybook game series, which also includes Above and Below and Near and Far. Now or Never includes two modes of play, Standard and Story. When playing in Story mode, players read from a book while they explore, making choices and learning more about the characters of the world that they inhabit. Each character has their own set of tales to tell, unique to the locations they explore, and diverse in plot, perspective, and motive, allowing the players to choose the direction that their own story will take. The game recently became available for pre-order on Red Raven's games as mm -hmm. Neat. The game recently became available for pre-order on Red Raven Games' website, and the pre-orders, which are estimated to begin shipping in the fourth quarter of this year, will also include a neat little upgrade for those who may want to be among the first to play this game when it's released. At number three is Unfathomable, the game that cannot be fathomed from Fantasy Flight Games. Lurking within the depths of the Atlantic Ocean are a swarm of vicious, unspeakable horrors. The Deep Ones. And for reasons unknown to mere mortal man, these ones of deepness have set their sights on the steamship the SS Atlantica. And now, taking the form of human Deep One hybrids, they infiltrate the vessel in order to destroy it from within, like double agents, saboteurs, or the writers of the Game of Thrones' eighth season. Now, the ship's truly human passengers must find and fend off the Deep Ones and prevent the SS Atlantica from taking too much damage while carefully managing the ship's crucial resources. <laughs> Unfortunately, though, nobody knows exactly which of their fellow passengers is actually an ancient agent of chaos with murder on the mind. So, for any hope of reaching their destination, the passengers will need to discreetly determine who's who before it's too late. Unfathomable is a reinvention of the very popular hidden role game Battlestar Galactica from 2008, and it's currently scheduled to set sail to retailers this September. Within your hands rests the destiny of one of history's greatest civilizations, so don't don't drop it. Maybe wear some sort of protective oven mitt or something, because formidable adversaries are arrayed against you just waiting for their opportunity to slap destiny out of your hands and onto the unswept kitchen floor of history. Thus sets the stage for game number two on this month's list, Imperium Classics from Osprey Games, in which players must conquer new lands, oversee dramatic scientific and cultural advances, and lead their people into the era of empires. But be careful, you, you there, because expanding too rapidly will not only give you the hiccups, but it will also cause unrest that will bring your civilization to its knees. But build up too slowly and you'll find yourself to be a mere footnote in history, like Erwin Shantleberry, the 13th century feudal lord that did some really amazing things, but who nobody remembers. Because he built up too slowly. The idiot. Imperium Classics is a card-driven civilization game with eight radically asymmetric civilizations. It's a standalone game, but is also fully compatible with Imperium Legends, allowing players to expand their pool of civilizations with each game. More cards means more variation and more challenges in your game, and this special edition Erwin Shantleberry promo card is a thing that does not exist. And the game that gained the most momentum this month, climbing 95 spots to go from 152 up to 57, is 2015's Viticulture Essential Edition from Stonemaier Games. In Viticulture, players find themselves in pre-modern Tuscany, where they've just each inherited a meager vineyard. Now, with only a few plots of land, an old crush pad, a tiny cellar holding the complete literary works of Erwin Shantleberry, and three workers in their employ, they strive to be the first to call their winery a true success. Those players vying for a virtual video viticulture can now play the game on Board Game Arena, where a version of it reportedly entered beta testing. Now, its, its interface may still need a little bit of refinement, but it is playable. While other versions of the game are also available on Steam, Tabletop Simulator, Tabletopia, and, of course, the physical board game version, which I hear is in 3D. Now, given the choice, which digital platform do you prefer if and when you play board games online? Or do you still prefer physical components over any digital implementation? 
let me know down in the comments, because this episode's over, but I'm still desperate for your attention. Until next time, I've been Chaz Marler for Watch It Played, and take care.